four. Hold on, are you, are you talking? YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here with another Washington Commanders video. And in today's video, I'm coming on here to talk about how bad I feel about the defense and pretty much to Scott Turner's trash and just talking <laughs> a little more about the Minnesota Vikings loss. And I got my man Dave here. If you if you think he looks recognizable and he's a person you've seen before, you probably have because he she was streaming with me the Titans game. He was over streaming the game with us, and ah man, that was another heartbreaking loss. Similar that was, to the that was and you know, and that's crazy, man. Because I was about to come stream with you this past weekend, and I would have been another heartbreaking loss. It, it, I mean, it literally, back back. it literally, it literally, the way that we lost the Minnesota Vikings game is kind of the way we lost the Titans game. But before we get into the to that. <laughs> I want to ask that you guys subscribe to the channel, like this video, and turn on post notifications so you get notified when I upload a video about this um, Washington Commanders or the NFL. And also, today I had the first episode of the morning show today, the podcast, TOTM, Top of the Morning Show. And um, we had a nice little turnout, but I hope to see more of you guys in there. We'll go live again 9 a.m. Wednesday for the morning show for the second episode. And if you don't happen to catch it live, don't worry because it's up on podcasting platforms. The first episode that we did today is up there now. Just type in Top of the Morning, hosted by Will Gotti on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. So hope to see you guys checking that out. And the links are down below in the description. With that out the way now, let's get back into the video. So again, oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe to my man Dave's channel. I don't know when he's gonna start back up, but uh, he'll start yeah, back I, up eventually. I'll be back up very soon. Trust and believe that. Trust and believe yeah. that. Very soon. But, but I want to talk about our the, the, the Minnesota Vikings game. Okay, we both we both we both feel bad for the defense. Okay, because Absolutely. the defense played well enough to win. Like Kendall they, I Fuller, think they played great. Not that they played great. They, I, they, well, I, like, wouldn't we be the first team to hold the Vikings to seven points in three quarters all season? Or am I I'm tripping? pretty, I'm pretty sure we have because again, that that offense was high powered. Um, you know, obviously putting up a lot of points, and the fact that we held them to seven points at the halftime was really good. I mean, everybody on that defense performed well, and it all got spoiled because of the offense's ability to not score or the lack of thereof. And a lot has to do with the guy that's in the title, and that is Scott Turner. Scott Turner's horrible, man. He's the worst play caller I've ever seen. Like, how can you have the, how can you fumble having these weapons? Like, you got Terry McLaurin, Curtis Sammy, Antonio Gibson, Brian Robinson, all the weapons on this team. All the, and you Logan Thomas, Amani Rogers. You have all the weapons in the world, Scott Turner. That John Bates. I, I gotta give Bates as a weapon. I mean, he's. Uh, I mean, even they gave John. I don't know if you remember this, but they gave John Bates a screen. I don't know why they didn't run out there, Monty Rogers. Monty, Monty Rogers got way more yards than John Bates. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I don't I don't get why they giving John Bates screens. He's literally slow. You know what I'm saying? But that's just Scott Turner right there. That's why I see his personnel. He's I don't know. He's weird, man. Like Scott Turner is a weird individual. Yeah, and then like Monty Rogers is more athletic. I mean, he literally showed that on the yeah, internet. They I gave him. Um, and it's not even that. Like I'm tired of screen plays with this offensive line because this <laughs> offensive line clearly can't that's get out. Of the they, yes. They're not athletic enough to move, so obviously the string game isn't going to work, whether you throw it to a tight end or a running back. And then it's like, I don't know, Scott Turner has a wonderful drive, and then the next drive he gets comfortable and he gets conservative and start running screens and, and handoffs. Like, the guy is so predictable, okay? He I'm is. done with Absolutely. him. That's so I, easy for defense. So I, I want him to be gone. Like, I'm done with Scott Turner. I hope Ron Rivera can see that he's the reason because we, this team is not 2019 anymore. We have a ton of talent. There's no reason why this team isn't 7-1 and one right now, okay? 6-3 and three at worst, okay? But this team, because of coaching, is where it's at. Now, mm -hmm. you have more to add on personally about Scott Turner, and how do you personally feel about Scott Turner's performance through the first nine weeks of the season? Um, I'm not going. This is this is very. I, I I'm as what I'm with you, but I am fed up with. I've been fed up with Scott Turner since literally even when we beat the Jags week one. I was seeing some very sus play. Like that was a good win. Of course, first one of the season. Everybody, all the commanders fans. Everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. No, but bruh, them calls in that game was just as sus. And I already knew where the season was going to go from there. But Scott Turner has to go. 
He called a third, a, a quarterback draw for Taylor Heineke on a third and nine. <laughs> he called a quarterback. And that, and it's a, look, I play football, bro. And I'm going to tell you right now, one play can cause a game. Think about if he calls a, a better play than that, we get a first down. You just never know. The game can change from one play. You know what I'm saying? Why? Like, like just that one bad call, like, he, he, he's wasting talent on his team, and it sucks, man. Like, mm. it sucks. Like, it sucks that, like, Terry McClellan get one deep ball throw all that game. And the, and the Vikings are ranked 30th in DBs in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the NFL. They literally have the third, the worst defensive back group in the NFL. And Terry McClellan did not get one deep ball thrown to him. Mm-hmm. You got it. Like, Curtis Sutter got that deep ball thrown. That was a miracle. Okay, but – and that game, Terry McClellan is the money man, the best – one of the best receivers in the league. He didn't get not one deep ball thrown to him. That's – that's just unacceptable, but like Scott Turner got to do better. Like that's just really like it's kind of getting embarrassing at this point. And it's like, mm-hmm. like you said, like you know what I'm saying. Like I don't know, I don't want to wait till next year. Like I want to see it now. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying. But I don't know. I'm I'm tired of Scott Turner. Yeah, I think he has to go. You know. Yeah. And and you alluded to the point that like one play changes a game, man. One I know you play. love Taylor Heineke. Where we all love Taylor Heineke, but. We can all admit and sit there that that pick was just crushing. Oh, that pick, yes, sir. All right, that pick, Chad, that pick, that pick get, won the Vikings the game. I'm beyond that. that uh, realistically, mm-hmm. that pick was big, was too, too huge. But this is where Scott Turner's going to come out and fact, Okay, they score, but we get the ball back. Why didn't we drive and, and, and go score on that drive back? Well, I, I can't really necessarily remember what happened, but then we, we punted it, right? Yeah, that's because we decided to throw a screen to Brian Robinson on third down. We we yeah. did the whole drive or the whole game rather was you run on first down. Oh, you don't get anything. Now it's second and ten, and you're gonna pass and it's incomplete. And then you're gonna run a screen with Brian Robinson, and then you go nowhere and then you're punting. Okay, so yeah, Scott Turner again still affecting the game, but we gotta admit that like. Taylor Heineke's fun to watch, but he's no one's long-term answer at quarterback. Like we need nah. a quarterback. Neither is Carson Wentz at this at this point. Um, but it's like this team, it's so frustrating as a fan because this is like the first time in years that this team has really been talented and we've had yeah. expectations, but the coach is holding this team back from I, being I, great. I, even Rob Rivera, man, you know, like okay, like even with Heineke, man, but like I it's just like even with Rob Rivera in the timeouts, man, like. The Vikings have all like it's no way you're down to one timeout. You lost both of your timeouts to literally, literally nothing. You you lost the challenge, then you caught a timeout for fourth down that you called a horrible play on. Scott Turner called a horrible play on, and you didn't get one yard. That's embarrassing for a coach who said that's literally embarrassing. And his time management management skills suck, bro. Like it's literally embarrassing. Like I didn't play high school football, even college football. No, I didn't see coaches with better time as skills than Ron Rivera. He's an NFL head coach, bro. That is embarrassing, man. Yeah, and I, and I agree. And this is the same guy that like literally challenged the Cam Sims catch that was clearly a drop. And then on week three, when Devonta Smith dropped the pass, he doesn't throw the challenge back. Like this guy is is horrible at the game <laughs> management. And not yeah. saying it was his strong suit, because I mean Panthers yeah. fans are warning us about it, but it's still. It's still hysterical at, a, at this point of how bad he is with it. I mean, the guy cost us the game. Um, mm-hmm. Scott Turner cost us the game. And then, obviously, John Ridgeway with the back-crushing play um, where he didn't even have to do that because, dude, you weren't going to block that kick. Yes, exactly. You, to kill. Like, you weren't going to block it. He was He was not getting no – but how do you not te- – see, I see, this is where it gets weird. Like, who's coaching him? Like, who didn't teach him to – to um literally no not to touch the center right there. Why did he jump on top of the center? That was literally like he was trying to blow the game like the game was rigged or something. Literally. Cause he literally that was so stupid, man. Like, and I don't know if you could blame that on coaching or just, or him. Like that's just weird. Like you gotta tell him out there, you know, uh, y'all wanna go block the kick. Okay, you want to try to get a block, but don't touch the center where right? the two nose guards in the middle do not touch the center. Like they have to know that. And I feel like that's on coaching too. Like yeah, I mean- I don't know. I thought Jack Durrell was bad, but I think he's doing very well with his defense. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I mean, and I, I agree. I, I I literally made a video on it saying, like, Scott Turner, I mean, not Scott Turner, Jack Durrell deserves his flowers because, I mean, at a point in time, we, we wanted Jack Durrell's one and gone. I wanted him gone um, yeah. for the simple fact that yeah. 
this whole coaching staff just wasn't performing well. Uh, but Jack Del Rio definitely turned around. And it, I don't know if it's more so he turned it around because he may not be calling anything different. It may be just that the players are performing better. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And um, Jack Del Rio is the only coach on this coaching staff that has it. Like, I honestly want them to fire Ron Rivera and make Jack Del Rio the head coach. Yeah, I was about to say that. I, like, would, I would honestly – be happy if we made Jack Dorio our head coach and five got turn. You know, if that was the case, I wouldn't mind Jack Dorio as a head coach. I really wouldn't. I don't know. He was a great. He's a. I think he was a great head coach back in his time. I. I don't see him as a bad, a uh, very bad head coach at all. I mean, yeah, this is the guy that was in Oakland and had Hell had had Oakland in the playoffs. You know, mm -hmm. so I don't know why he got fired from there. Um, but yeah, I definitely would prefer him than Ron Rivera, and obviously that's not going to happen. But it's like yeah, you only can, you yeah. only can pray like, for it. You know, it's it's something that should you know that that should happen, but you know they're like the GMs of the command. Nobody's like going to see that, you know. Mm -hmm. Is what it yeah. is. Like, and then on some more positive notes, because I mean I know we were still hurt over the loss. <laughs> yeah, Damon Davis finally arrived. Like oh. all the people that gave up on Jamin Davis, saying and I was putting on people. Sure. Not gonna lie, I'm he, he was one of those people that thought I, was one of those, I was tired of seeing Jamie get cooked, stop, kept filling the wrong gap. I, I, I was done. I was both for that, and this is only his second year, which that was very. Really, that's as a fan, I feel like that's selfish on Jamie because you know it's only his second year, and you know honestly, I got to start realizing that like what was that like week five maybe? I started realizing that with him. I'm like, ah, right, you know what? Jamie ain't that bad. He just got to get worked on. And that's Jack Del Rio right there working with him because Jack Del Rio could have benched him easily. Mm. The way uh, Jamie was playing the first, what, three or four weeks this year, mm -hmm. I think he could have easily been, you know, benched or whatever. But Jack Del Rio kept believing in him, and he, he just, like, performing. I think I think if he keep doing this, and he, you know what I'm saying, he get, he, he's learned the game more, I think over time he's going to be a, a superstar. Yeah, I agree. Like, Will Jamin Davis ever be like this elite linebacker that we may never get? Like we may yeah. never, like we may never reach that peak. But that's not what we need out of him. Like obviously you, obviously you draft him at nineteen, so you want that out of him. But mm -hmm. looking at it, if this is the Jamin Davis we're going to get for the rest of his career, that is a really good linebacker. I mean, the guy has been playing uh, free. He's been playing more confident. Um, mm -hmm. and they've been putting him in positions where he can actually play to his strong suit. So he's yeah. arrived. And I'm glad he's good, man, because a lot of people were giving up on him, saying we should have did this, we should have did that. But he's finally here, man, and he's looking. Uh, how you? I think I think Bostic was solid this yesterday too. I don't know if you was watching Bostic. I think he was pretty solid, man. He he was okay, but I mean, at the end of the day, he still showed why he's John Bostic and why he can't <laughs> play him and why he can't cover anymore. The guy's so old, he can't move. But I mean, what, what, what were we going to do? We didn't have Cole Ogum, no David Mayo. Nothing. All we had was John Boston, so we had to play what we had to play with, right? You know what happened, happened to the linebacker we got from the Eagles, the white man? Nathan Gary, he got injured, but he was pretty on a practice squad this week. Um, but I don't know if he'll if he'll ever. I think he. I, I don't know if he'll see the. He was. Probably put him on the practice squad. Yeah, I, I think we just brought him back on it, and I think he was maybe on special teams, or that's what we probably want to bring him back for. I don't see him being a be a being a back a linebacker, but yeah, um. Defenses it play well and they've been playing well since week basically week three, second half. Um, and it's exciting to see, but it's definitely unfortunate because I feel bad for man. They deserve to win. They these deserve games, to win. And they like I, 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 I definitely feel for Allen because he's a captain. Like I feel for him, man, because he's giving it his all. And it's not it's not fair to them, bro. And I play defense, man. You know, I'm gonna be honest, but like, especially in my school, like in the past, like even last year, my offense struggled so hard. And that it get that will really get stressful for a defense. At, at some point, it, it's gonna get stressful and it's gonna get irritating. And that can cause mistakes, bro. I swear, like you you so worried about like, you know, what, what your offense gonna do, is your offense gonna score? You know, we it, it put a lot of pressure on it, like unneeded pressure. It's thoroughly unneeded. You yeah. have talent on your offense, your defense should not be feeling uncomfortable like they should feel like they should go out there and make plays and know they off and be confident in their offense that their offense gonna go and do their thing and you know i don't know what they thinking but if it was me i wouldn't be thinking that you know because scott yeah. turner he's just getting very it's getting very frustrating yeah and I, and I and i appreciate for coming on too because it's like now we can get an actual current like collegiate football players point of view of this whole situation that's going on um but 
I definitely appreciate you for coming on for the couple minutes. Um, I just wanted to bring you on and talk a little bit about this game. Now it's time to put a bow on it and talk a little bit more later, you know, in a week about the ownership and, you know, moving on to the Eagles completely. So, yeah, man, there you have yeah. it. I appreciate you for coming on. As always, being boy Juan Gotti. Like, mm -hmm. comment, subscribe. Hell to Washington Commanders. We're on the road to 5,000 subscribers. Hit that subscribe button again if you haven't already. And also, don't forget to check out the new morning show podcast, TOTM Top of the Morning Sports Show. That will be going live Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 9 a.m. And if you don't catch it live, you can catch it on the podcasting platform, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. That's where you can find it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Any last words that you have for the viewers out there, Dave? Let them know where they can find you. Oh. Ah, man, nah, nah. Only thing last words I got, man. Subscribe to my man Juan Gotti, man. Y'all can go also. If y'all want to subscribe to me, y'all can go ahead. I'm, I'm kind of a content creator. I was some time ago, but, you know, I got busy with football and everything, so I started posting. But I am getting back on that for sure, 100%. So y'all can go tune in to me, too, if y'all want. But subscribe to my man Juan Gotti, man. Best commander sports talk out here. Yes, Show. sir. Peace. Uh, cross me one time. That's going to get you pop. Get you pop, man.